Hey, and welcome to another tutorial of painting at home with Dream With Me Art. I'm Tiffany, and I'm so excited to have you join me again today to do this art project at home. So today we're going to be doing this painting that I made of some hydrangeas. And the fun part about this is that we're going to be using some interesting materials to actually create this. So, um, like all of the lessons I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to only do red, wait, this is red, red, blue, yellow, and we will have our white and our black. Those are the only colors that you'll need. Any other colors that we have, we will work on mixing together. So we'll work on how to blend, how to mix, how to get our different tones and shades. But if you have these basic colors, the three primary colors, you will be able to do this painting. The other materials you'll need today, um, this is an 11 by 14 canvas. If you want to do your project on 11 by 14, that's fine. Um, if you have more of a smaller piece, I also, when I demonstrate, you'll probably be seeing me doing more on the eight by 10 canvas boards. If you get these, these are in, in good value packs and a little, uh, little cheaper than the canvases. So that's another great thing to do. Or if you've got like acrylic canvas paper, sometimes that comes in different, if you've got different sizes, we can make it work. So do not worry, you can do this. So I'll demonstrate today on the eight by 10 canvas board. Um, you'll need one large brush for helping to uh, get our whole background in. You'll need kind of more of a smaller round brush. And then, Here's where our new stuff is. You'll need some plastic. Now I, you can either use plastic wrap, but in the process of trying to conserve and reuse, I get plastic from lots of different things. Um, I get packaging that comes in, in boxes. I can use this kind of plastic. This is plastic that was around the frozen pizza that we had last night. We can use that plastic. As long as it's clean, don't have any leftover like pepperonis or something in it. So. It's fine, it's all cleaned out. Um, you'll need probably about four pieces, uh, maybe five, and just be prepared, you might get a little messy today. Don't worry, it washes off, you're fine. Um, the other thing that we will use today are Q-tip bunches. So cotton swabs like this, get that closer for you. And what you'll do, um, I like to use these little little mini hair bands I've used for my daughters for their, their hair. Rubber bands also work as well. So what we'll do is you'll take your Q-tips and kind of set it up so that they all are kind of the same level and then you will rubber band them together. And we'll do different bunches. This one's got about uh, six or seven in them. So I've got a number of them that are like this one's got eight. Um, yeah, this one's got about seven. So we're gonna have just a few of these. Having a few single ones will come in handy too. So that is another tool that we're gonna be using today. So if you've never painted with Q-tips before, welcome. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we need to do the background. When you're using acrylic paint, um, we always need to make sure and wet our brush first to kind of prime it and so that the paint is not all the moisture getting absorbed into the brush that it's actually going to go onto our canvas. So we take our brush, we put it in, in the water, and we drag off the excess moisture on the edge of our brush. This is a uh, paint only mug, as you can see. Um, don't drink that. <laughs> all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our yellow and put it on our plate. And then we're also going to take our white. Um, I use a lot of white, so I got the big white. Um, squeeze that out. Okay, so yellow and white on our plate. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our background. We're going to kind of do this circular, kind of having a focal point, a circle kind of in the center of our painting. Um, let's see, I'll lay down our paints over here so you can see. Can you see that better? There we go. Um, this is all, this is all new. We're just having fun, right? You're painting, I'm painting. It's relaxing, fun. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a little bit, a little bit of our yellow 
and a lot of our white. We want the center of our circle to be very, very, very bright, okay? And what we're gonna do to make it a circle is just go around, kind of in a circle, and then just start spreading. Start spreading it out. You see that? We kind of get this really warm, light yellow, and it's probably even hard for you to see on the camera because I'm doing it so light, and it's probably uh, not wanting to pick it up as much. That's fine, we're still, still putting it on there. So it's not white, it's a very, very, very light yellow that we're doing kind of in a circle motion. So you see that? We've kind of got, kind of got our bright center. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling in a little more of the yellow, a little more of the yellow so that now around it, you can see there's more yellow, more yellow around our bright center and I can kind of kind of swoosh it around while it's still wet and blend that. You see? So may have to pull more white, more yellow. Ooh, also always a tip, if you are starting to see little white dots on your canvas, kind of streaky, that means that you don't have enough paint. And that means that that canvas is really starting to try to like soak it up and it's acting really dry. It's really thirsty. We call it a really thirsty canvas. So add more paint, just add more paint. First layer also on a canvas, it, it really will sometimes take a lot more paint. And if you've got a larger canvas, it's gonna take more paint than what you're seeing me pull right now. So do not worry, it's okay. If you're like, oh man, I just feel like I'm always going back for more paint. That's, it probably needs it, that's fine. So no problem, it probably needs that. And we're just gonna give it to it so it will cooperate with us. We don't want your canvas fighting with you, okay? So now we're gonna really go, I'm gonna really get more and more and more yellow, like a darker yellow out to this edge. You see how we've gone from very light and now it's kind of a darker, darker yellow. And again, this yellow is probably hard on the camera, he doesn't, I guess it's not like in the yellow as much. You can see that better. Here we go. Yeah. So you can kind of see, I can kind of see that corner right there. And then it's a little streak and then kind of a darker corner. So we're still kind of keeping our center nice and light as we give it this yellow, yellow base, right? Just getting that all the way covered with yellow and keeping our kind of our oval there in the center and kind of blend around the edges. Okay, so there, there you can see now is our yellow kind of around the edges and lighter in the center. Um, all right, while this is still wet, our first little trick with our plastic, so I'm gonna scrunch up this little plastic. We're gonna add just kind of like a little bit of texture to this. And I'm just going to dab and kind of smash it all around on the canvas. And you'll start to see maybe some of the color. The color's gonna kind of come off onto the plastic. I didn't add the color on the plastic. This is coming off of our canvas and that's okay. This is gonna be kind of blending it in. And if you are having really harsh lines around your circle, this may be the time that you get to kind of kind of help that, right? We're gonna help that. And you'll kind of see it kind of makes a neat texture. It's gonna be hard on the camera to see that, but here we go. All right, so that's the first thing of using our plastic. Um, we might be able to reuse this again. You can set it aside, um, but just we'll put that over there. And we're gonna go ahead and rinse out a brush. Do not let paint dry on your brush because it will get hard, but a trick. You ready? Here's my trick. I have had paint brushes dry with paint on them before. With acrylic paint, here's the trick. You can soak the paint brushes um, for a little while in rubbing alcohol. And the rubbing alcohol will break down the paint on the brushes and bring back uh, the brush. Now, you do that too often, it'll start to probably try and break down your brush over time. But if you really wanna try and save your brush, 
you know, like, man, this thing is, I mean, I've done ones that are like hard as a rock, as hard as the end of this. And I've been able to get them soft again. So little trick, especially if you get forgetful. The other thing is we don't leave our paint brushes sitting in the water because that will also break down our paint brushes over time and the bristles will just start to fall out of that. So those are just little brush tips to help make sure that you can do more projects because you don't want to miss out on doing more projects, right? Okay, um, so the next thing I'd like to do is, yeah, actually I'll pull in my plastic again that I did that already had the yellow. And this time I want to just, I'm actually using this and putting it in the paint this time. So we're gonna put it right into the yellow, just yellow. And I'm gonna go around my corner. You see my corner? You remember where we're doing like the darker part of, of our paint? I'm just gonna tap in. Now see, I did a big old glob right there. That means I probably, I didn't kind of spread it enough on the plastic on my plate. So you kind of need to swirl, swirl, swirl. And with this, I'm gonna to try to really tap it and spread it out instead of leaving a big glob. Because we're not trying to glob, we're trying to do little dabs. And the, and the paint runs out quickly on the plastic, it's different than a brush. So, if you can see, kind of just dab, 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 dab in all the way around. Again, get some more paint. See, and again, if you had a larger canvas, don't worry, you're grabbing lots of paint, it feels like. Um, dab, 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 swirl on the, on the uh, plate, and dab. So that's kind of giving us a really neat textured layer of our yellow, okay? And yes, look, we've already got paint on us. No worries, it's okay. Although I would recommend if you, if, uh, you think that you're going to get yourself like your, your clothes messy? Clothes and acrylic paint, they do not mix well. Acrylic paint will not wash out moms. So cover up those clothes, apron, or wear a shirt that you don't care about. Probably hair back. So it's not getting into the paint. Anyway, so we've got that. Now we're going to go ahead and put out some red. All right. So we're going to put out red onto our plate. Don't need a lot. I probably actually did too much. It's always best with acrylic paint just to put small amounts out. You uh, may end up using less than you think. You can always add more. It's You will waste it though. If you put out too much, you can't put it back. So I'm gonna grab another plastic. Let's see, I'll do my packaging plastic that came with some supplements that I like to order. So, healthy for my body, fun for art. All right, so I'm gonna scrunch that up, giving me lots of little crinkles right there. And I'm gonna dip and swirl. I'm gonna do kind of that swirl again with the plastic. Now this, because it's so, so bright and strong, we don't want to just really smash it. We're gonna be like tapping, lightly tapping. Okay, lightly tapping. So once you see, just light, lightly tapping because I still wanna see some of that yellow through. Do you still see that you see some yellow through there? I still see some yellow. That's good. If we're going too smashy, we're gonna cover up all the yellow and then what's the point of why we did all that yellow? So we're gonna just Go around our edge like we did with the yellow before. So around and around and you notice we still have our, our center right here. Do you see your center still? You should still kind of have that center. And I have a little more trouble getting to the bottom of mine because I have it on an easel. Probably if you had this laying flat it would be easier um, for me. I'm just gonna flip. By the way, you can always flip your canvas if you have trouble getting to something. It's fine. There's no rule in art that says you must keep it one way. If you have to flip a canvas, 
to get to a certain area, no problem. And when you're done, you flip it back. Okay, so we're going to just finish that. Okay, now we have that layer of red. Perfect, and yes, I have red on my fingers too. You have red on your fingers, Shelly? Yeah, we all do, it's fine. All right, uh, and now I'm gonna actually, we can reuse this plastic. So let's set that right there and get a little bit of black out. So a little bit of black, don't need much because black is so, so strong. It's so strong, we are, yeah, I got my paint. Okay, <laughs> so this time, same thing, same thing, except now we're gonna be using black. Again, we're gonna be very, very, very delicate, very delicate and not smashing all over. Okay, so we're gonna take it in the black and if you see, I'm gonna really swirl it. And you know, cause I already still have red on there, it's fine, it'll blend in with the red we already have. And why waste more plastic? There's enough plastic in the oceans and garbage places right now. We can at least reuse a little bit of plastic and make it help us do art. So now we're going to just with the black. Oh, actually, I didn't get enough. See, I can always add, always add more. Now, if for some reason you get way too excited with the black, we can always let that part dry and you can go back over with some of your lighter colors. You can go back with some light yellow and some of the red again to kind of try to blend it out. But it's always nice if we could just be a little gentler this time and not have to redo it. But there is no messing up in art. Repeat with me. There's no messing up in art. The only way you mess up is when you give up. So don't give up. It's fine. If it doesn't look just like mine, it is okay. Keep going. We're gonna keep doing this, okay? There is no messing up. Don't you dare, don't you dare say, oh, I'm not doing it, I can't do art. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, not allowed, not allowed. I don't, I don't allow it. So, here we go. We're still gonna keep going around. You see that? You see that? Okay. And maybe I'll kind of go a little bit. Just trying to, okay, okay. I feel like if I go too much, it'll, it'll be too much. Maybe, maybe a little more there. So I can still see if you did this kind of okay, then you should still be able to see yellow and red and then in the black. Do you see that? Do you see all those colors? If not, then you can kind of go, well, maybe I need to do a little less. And I'd like to, I want to come really dark, darker on my corners themselves. Just the corners. Kind of make them, maybe the edge, just really kind of darker on the corner and the edge. Reminds me of one of those um, focus filters where they'll take your picture and then the outside edges, they make it kind of darkened. And so your focus goes towards the center of the picture. That's what we're kind of trying to do. Make think people want to look at the center of our painting. Okay, so yes, we're messy. It's fine. This plastic we are done with. Um, yeah, we're done with that one. Okay, we're gonna do one more, one more plastic, one more plastic, and then we're gonna move on. This time, go ahead and pull out your blue. And I'm gonna put my blue, see I've, I've got the weird smears. I'm gonna put my blue kind of closer to my white, but away from my black. Um, so I'll probably put it right here because I'm gonna do a little bit of blue and white this time. So, put a little bit of blue right there. Get some more plastic. And this time, this will be our only color where we're gonna actually be doing it around the inside of our circle. So that's gonna be kind of cool. So this time, I'm gonna dip into the white, white, you see the white? And then 
a little bit of the blue and when I swirl, when I swirl over here, do you see? See, we made like this light, this light, 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 kind of sky blue color. Ooh, you see that? So again, we can make lots of colors because we have our red, yellow, blue, and then having our white and black. So there's our kind of a pretty sky blue. I've got that on there. I'm double checking that I've got it really blended. If I've got dark blue spots, it will uh, it'll show up. So this time we're gonna go around the inside part of the circle, the inside part. And again, we're gonna do gentle, 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 just gentle taps. So, ooh, maybe I got too much paint, it's okay. There's no making up, there's no messing up, no messing up, we're not messing up. We're just going to, maybe I need to wipe off a little bit. Yeah, you can use the edge. There we go. And I'm just gonna go around the edge of the inside part. And get this light blue kind of in there. Kind of layering over top around the edge. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop there because we just wanted just a little bit. So here is here's where we are so far. Do you see? And it's not it's not absolutely exactly the same. That is no problem. All right, if you wanna pause and wash your hands right now, this could be a good time. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with messy hands, but I'm okay with that. And we're also gonna let this go ahead and dry for just a little bit. So go ahead, pause if you want. Okay, you either paused or you decided to keep watching and I pretended to pause. Either way, it's all good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually grab one of our Q-tip bunches. So you should already have just a number of these bunches made. It just is handy to have them ready. Um, I'm gonna grab one that's a little bigger. Let's see here, I've got eight, eight on here. Um, and again, what we do is we make sure that using the edge of our table that we kind of, they're all kind of level, okay? So they're all gonna kind of touch at the same time. This is how we're going to draw our um, hydrangea blossoms. Okay, so we're not even pulling a paintbrush for this part. So this time we're gonna pull into our blue and we're gonna do just blue, just straight, straight, straight blue. Okay, I'm gonna bring this closer. All right, so the straight blue, if you see on our example over here, how many blossoms do you count? Count five, about, about five. It probably feels like there could be a sixth one kind of there hidden maybe in the center, but we didn't really have that. But let's see. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So you can tell we're going to kind of do those circles right on our canvas here. Now, again, mine is a eight by 10 canvas so it's a little smaller and we do smaller uh, circles. If you are doing a larger canvas, just make your circles larger to fill up the same amount of space. Okay, so we're going to take these and this is not a, a streak or a smear, it's a tap, 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 kind of like they're jumping on a trampoline. Okay, jump, 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 move, jump, move, jump, move. Okay, do you like trampolines? Come on. We're gonna make our Q-tips jump on our canvas like it's a trampoline. So I'm just going to tap, 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 tap. And do one circle there. And kind of like our plastic, the paint doesn't last very long on these. So circle, 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 circle. There's our first. First circle, okay? You do not have, it should not be solid. I should still see circles. I should still see the dots of my Q-tips, all right? Now we're gonna go around and do another one. 
right here. Do you see that? So going around, here's another one. Circle, circles, okay? Two. Oh no. All right, I almost, I almost did the count. Count Dracula in my head, not Dracula. The Count from Sesame Street. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Anyway. All right. So, number three. I'm going to come down here. He's going to poke out a little more over there. So, that is our third one. See? All right. He's kind of, kind of coming out a little more on that side. Grab some more paint. We'll do our other circle. Right here, another circle, more paint. Bounce, bounce, bouncing. Making sure you hear me pounding. Bam, 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 bam. Lots of it. Lots of, lots of pounding to get that down in there. Okay. And now for our last one, we'll do another circle. And you'll probably be going, wait, there's an empty middle part. We're going to fill that in. Do not worry. Do not worry. We're going to fill that in. But we're trying to make sure we get our circle placement set up first. But we're not going to leave that. We're not going to leave that. Don't worry. We're going to say that maybe this guy comes up this way. And maybe this one kind of folds in this way. And really, we're going to kind of fill in that. Okay. Yeah. So really, it's, it's kind of filled in, but we can still see, if you can tell, the outline of our five different blossoms. Do you see that? Do you have that? Okay. So they're not completely filled in. It is fine. I have run out of blue, so I'm going to actually put some more down. Again, you can always add more to your plate when you need to. It's hard to put it back in the tube when you're done. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to go back over it, but this time we're going to start adding some lighter blue into it because that's going to start adding our depth. Okay, so we're going to still use the same ones. Now, if you've noticed that yours is starting to get really um, kind of stringy and stuff, all you have to do if you want to to start a new one, flip it over to the other side and reuse that other side. So. Uh, but be aware if this side is still wet, it'll get you messy. Okay, so I mine is still doing okay, so I'm going to just stick with that. I'm going to grab blue, but then I'm going to dip a little bit into my white. And I'm actually, oh, that's too much, not going to mix it because I'd like to see the white and the blue kind of do different things on the blossom. So I'll start back over here and I'm going to go back over and going around on that blossom. Do you see how the lighter color, whoop, I did a little too light, but you know what? That's fine. I'll just grab some more blue and then mess up. There's no messing up. The only way you mess up is what? When you give up. We're not giving up. Okay. So now I'm going to go around on this one. Again, you should still be able to see kind of the dots that we're trying to create with it. And mine's getting kind of hairy and fuzzy too, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip mine over and dip my blue and my white and start on this side. So here we go. It's a lot, it's a lot of, and if you have a much larger canvas, you're gonna feel like you are just doing so many dots, it's fine. If you need to take a little hand break and jump back in, if you need to take a little pause, even take a little drink of water, no problem, I'll be here waiting for you. We are just having fun. So getting some more blue mixed in and our lighter blue. All good, all good stuff. Okay, so that is that where we are right now. So 
that's starting to already look really good. It's starting to look really, really good. And again, you can see my example back there. It's not going to look exactly like that. We're going to get close. It's the same techniques, but every time you do a painting, even for me, it's going to look slightly different. So no worries. I promise it'll look like yours, which is the most important thing. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some highlights. Now highlights are the lightest part of the flower. If you look back here, you'll see that there's some parts that look really, really, really almost white, right? So when we're doing paintings, we're also telling a story about where our light is coming from. And our light lets us know where the lightest part of our painting needs to be. So if the sunshine in this painting, we're saying if maybe the sunshine is coming from right over here, then there will be some spots on this flower that will be very light on some parts and some parts that will not be very light, okay? And where we place the lighter parts will also help tell us that story, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. Um, actually, I wanna change bunches. This big one is, I think, too much. We've done that for our whole shape, but I think if we go ahead and switch to one that's a little smaller, this one has about just six, six little, little in our bunch right there. That might actually be a little easier for me to control where this is going. So I'm gonna go in and grab light, 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 basically just white. Basically, wait, where's the camera? There it is, Woo. just white, okay? And we're gonna say that our light is kind of up top here on this blossom. Dab some more, get some more white. So some white right there, and then maybe some white on the top of this blossom down here. So that one's got some light hitting it. Okay, and then maybe this one's got some light hitting the top of it right here. Oh, I did a big blob, but you know what? We'll just bounce it out and it's fine. All right, and maybe some light. Ooh, because now you can see if the light is hitting each blossom in different places, then we can tell that they're different, the different bunches, right? So maybe that one is getting more there. And then, oh, let's tap it on my plate. And maybe this one gets a little more up into our... So there we've got some lighter ones, some lighter parts, okay? Now I'm going to flip it over and I want to actually add back in some, some dark because I feel like we've lost a little of our shadow. So just the, just the blue. Sorry, I haven't been looking at you very much. Um, <laughs> looking at this painting, trying to help you be able to do this as best as you can. I'm sorry if it's kind of far away. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this whole thing on camera. Okay, so this one, we're gonna say that our darker parts need to be more underneath part of the blossom. So I'm gonna use my darker one and kind of go up underneath and kind of give it some darker, some darker spots. You see that? So that's still telling part of our light story because where it's darker, it means that that's not getting as much light as some of the other parts. You see that? And it also can help us to separate some of our blossoms. So now I'm kind of telling them, hey, this is one blossom and, and that's another blossom. So you stay over there and we stay over here, but we're all still bunched together. And then maybe I'll flip it and get a little more light right in the center right there. Okay, so you see, as I want you to look at your own blossoms too, the way that you've shaped yours, and I want you to see if you've got some lighter spots on it, right? And some darker areas. 
as we kind of go around. Um, if you really haven't, you're thinking, man, I really need to get in there. You can grab just a single, just a single Q-tip and go in there and say, man, I think I'm going to, I really need to have just a couple of dark, a couple dark spots there and maybe like one or two right here. You can go back in with just the Q-tip. I wouldn't recommend doing this for everything because that's a little tedious for just one Q-tip. So, all right. Oh, well, that'll work. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this is shaping up. Uh huh. Maybe, maybe I need to round that one out a little bit. There, I kind of like that better. You kind of check it out, step back a little bit, examine. Yeah, I think we're good. So, for the bunches, we are done. With the bunches. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our our stems. So we need brown. Do you have a brown? I don't have a brown. We are going to make a brown. Okay, so this is where we're going to use our paintbrush that we had. And remember when we're getting ready to use it that we always make sure and get it wet to activate it. Wipe off the edge. All right, to make a brown, we are gonna actually mix all three of our primary colors together to make brown. Um, so on, on your plate or whatever you're using for your, your paint, um, I'm gonna scoop up and bring over here some of my blue. Still have a little bit of red left over, so I'm gonna use that, definitely red. And then our yellow. I'm gonna scoop that all over there. Um, I can tell though that I'm probably not having enough red. Whenever you mix a brown, you end up using a little more red than you expect. So I'm gonna start mixing on the edge right here and mixing those three colors together. Now, if you kind of look, mine's looking a little swampy, a little more green, a little more green. That's why I, I kind of tell I needed more red. Red helps to bring the warmth back into it and uh, makes it a little less, a little less sicky green color. So you may be like me and you need to add some more red. So let's see here, I'm mixing. And as you see, you'll start to see, maybe I need a little more yellow again. Red and yellow will, oh, look, look, look. Do you see that? I see a very lovely shade of brown coming up. Who knew you could make such a pretty color brown? Now, I'm gonna try not to keep swirling and painting my plate. I want the paint to go in my painting. So it's very easy to end up getting so wrapped up in mixing your paint color that you will not leave enough paint to help with your painting. So it's okay, I, I think I have enough. But if not, you might need to mix some more once you figure out how to get your blend. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start from our center down um, blossom and just draw, just paint, paint one line right there. That's our center, center stem going straight down. That looks like a, like a really bushy tree. Right, and actually hydrangeas are more of a, a, a very woody um, bush than kind of these stems. So they're gonna be kind of thicker uh, branches, kind of more so. All right, so our next one, we're gonna say is kind of coming from like this one way up here. So his branch is gonna kind of be right there. We'll say it'll kind of wiggle down. Not all of them are straight. Nature is never perfectly straight. And I love that because that means I never mess up whenever I'm making it wiggly. So you're not messing up. All right, we're gonna do another one. We're saying that's gonna come, that's coming from up there. I'm gonna wiggle him down. I just feel like making him really wiggly today. Why not? Sure. You should see how some, look at branches when you go outside and see, do you ever see a very straight branch? If you do, I think that you would be very surprised to ever see that in nature. 
All right, this one, he's coming from his flower. So we're gonna say he's coming down here, down to the bunch, joining the bunch. Oop, I don't have enough paint, I'm seeing little dots. What does that mean? I need to get more paint to cover up. That and brown doesn't like to cover very well. Sometimes uh, you have to add a little more paint to it. And then this one, We'll bring down. So we've got the five. We had five flowers. We need five stems. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, all right. So we've got our five different stems. Perfect. What we're going to do now is we need to add uh, and mix a highlight. So I'm going to rinse out my brush just because I don't want this to dry out. Now we need, we need a lighter brown and normally when our first thought is to make something lighter we want to add white with brown that will look very gray and it will not be i mean if you want a light gray that's perfect light brown is not going to happen um with adding white instead we actually need to add yellow if you want to lighten a brown you add yellow okay so I've got my mix over here of my brown that we did, and I am just going to pull more yellow over into kind of a corner area of it and just really, really, really mix. Again, like, like a lot of yellow. And you'll start to see it, start to see it lighten up as I keep mixing it. You see, you see it's this really, really light, light, light brown now. It didn't turn gray. And turn kind of a yellowy brown, right? But you'll see that it's more of a brown, especially when we put it on our branches. So this is going to be our highlight. Like with the flowers, we were telling a story about where the light was coming from. We're going to do the same thing on the branches. Okay? Or the stems. They're still kind of branches. Okay, so I've got that really, really light color. So now I'm going to come to the branch right here. And this time, instead of doing the whole thing, I'm gonna just do it on one side of the branch, so like half of it. So we're gonna be very light on our pressure, not smashing it. Paint brushes are not to be not the same as pencils. We don't we don't smash; they bend. They bend and make big, wide, wide, wide lines when we smash it. When we do nice and light, we can get very thin. You see, we can get very thin with it, but it would have to be very gentle. All right, so you can do that, you can be gentle, and again, you cannot mess up. If you feel like you've messed up, I will show you how you can fix it, or you can always go back, okay, it's fine. So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna say the light's right here. So on this side of my, my branch, I'm gonna follow the edge and just put my highlight on that side, okay? So the lighter part, just right there. Just right there. And it may, if you notice that it's, it's hard to tell the difference. You know, honestly, maybe we need to even let it dry a little more, but I'm trying to go quickly. If you feel like yours is too wet right now, you can pause me. You can pause, let yours dry before you move on to this. I'm trying to just go ahead and do this so that you can see the complete project, although you can probably tell we're almost done. We're almost done. So going down one side of each of the branches with our light, light, light color, just to say this is where the light is. It also gives us kind of half of another layer of this brown because brown doesn't cover very well. All right, so I did that lighter part. And now this time I'm gonna actually I don't have any more black out. Okay, you need the teeny tiny, like, like a dot, a dot of black, like dot, done. Like just the teeny tiniest little bit. You don't, don't do a big squirt, don't, okay. But like you, I'm trying to get better at managing my paint. Look, I had way too much white out here. I'm gonna be so sad to throw that away. I should, I should have thought it out better. Okay, this time, I am going to grab my black with just a little tip, tip, tip of my brush. And we're going to be drawing just a line 
on the other side on the branch. So we did our highlight on one side and the other side we're gonna do a dark shadow line with black, okay? So I'm going to just follow it down on one side and there's our, there's our shadow. See that? So there's the shadow line on that, okay? So we're just gonna, I'm gonna scoot this closer while I do this, right? So just following the edge of my branch on one side with the black, okay? Keep going. This side of the branch, I'm saying you're the dark side right there. Um, and maybe this side, I'm gonna choose that it is darker more on this side because it's still under the blossoms. There we go. And then one more, one more, almost. This is where everyone starts holding their breath. Make sure you breathe. It's okay. We are all okay. All right. Do you see that? Okay. Woo, get up close. All right, we're seeing that? Okay. Good. You did that. Rinse out your brush. We have like two more things to do. That's it. Well, actually one thing, but two things. No, wait, <coughs> Never mind. I almost forgot the leaves. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do the leaves. Who remembers how to make green? Because we don't have green, do we? Green, how do we make green? We need blue and we need yellow. Good. So I still have, see here on mine, I've still got some yellow right here. I'm gonna pull some yellow over there, make, make a little yellow plop, and then I'm gonna pull some of my blue, you need less blue. Blue is a very strong color. You need less blue of it, less, less of the blue when you're trying to make the green. Okay, yellow and the green. And the, wait, yellow and the blue makes the green. There you go. All right. I almost forgot the leaves. You guys are probably yelling at me going, wait, what about the leaves? I'm so sorry. All right, we're on to it, it's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be making our leaves. And these are kind of a kind of a funny shape, but it, it'll make sense. So we're gonna kind of go up, down, and straight. And then on the other side, we'll go down, up, and then they connect, and then we fill it in. You see that? Okay, let's do another one. We'll go up. Up, down, and straight. Kind of like out like that. And this time we'll go down and up and meet them and paint it into the middle. Okay? So, I'm gonna grab some more green and I want you to look at your branches at where you think the leaves would best fit. Um, we're gonna do leaves, you know, even just a little one kind of like in here, because he needs some leaves. You know, maybe some right there. Um, this one will give him some leaves. So this is adding some more, some more green for us. So, here we go. Keep adding some leaves. Again, you're looking at yours going, yeah, I think a leaf would look good there. Maybe one that's going and go over top of one of the branches because you know they kind of layer over top of each other. Don't worry if you're like, oh no, it went on the branch. Well, yeah, sometimes they layer over each other. That's fine. Um, maybe I want to turn him into a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to add to him. I feel like he needs to be a big leaf. Yeah, that would need to be bigger. There we go. There. Okay, so now. And if you've ever seen a hydrangea bush, they have really big, beautiful leaves. Really pretty leaves. Okay, um, so let's rinse. Rinse out a brush, rinse, rinse, rinse. 
while our leaves are drying, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna say that our, that this is a bunch that's been gathered and is being given to someone. And so it's got a pretty red ribbon around it. So we'll go ahead and do the red around it and then come back to adding some highlights and lowlights to our leaves because they need to dry or we're just gonna be smearing them. Okay, so I'm just gonna get just red, straight just red. And right here at the bottom, we're gonna just do, like we're doing uh, like an upside down smile shape, kind of like an arc of red. Okay, can you see that? This red ribbon, red ribbons make it really pretty. So we have that red, red ribbon right there. And then we're gonna say it has two little squiggly tails going off of the main part. I think it's tied right there. And it's got this little red, red ribbon tails. There we go. Oh, rinse, rinse, rinse. All right, um, we're gonna go back to our leaves now. Mine are still a little wet. If yours are still really wet, you can go ahead and pause and let yours dry. Um, if you're ever in a hurry to dry your painting, um, you can use a hair dryer on a cool air setting. Heat will make the acrylic paint crackle and possibly chip. So you don't want that, but you, uh, a lot of hair dryers have like a little cool trigger button and you can use that just for the air to move the air and let the paint dry. Or you could take a little break, which is fine. Um, so I hope that you would just go ahead and let yours dry. Go ahead and keep going, going, because mine are basically dry. This one's a, a little too wet, but I'll just keep going. So I've got the green that we already mixed, and right now we need a highlight yellow, or highlight green. So this one, we are gonna add a little bit of white to it, to our green, to make it lighter. So we have a little touch of our light green, All right? All right, light green, you see the light green, how it got lighter? So you're gonna learn so much about how to mix these colors. Look at all these colors we've made. And how many colors did we start with? Five. How many are we always gonna try and do? Only five, we'll do it. Okay, so this time our highlight was gonna be like on the top of the leaf, like it's sitting on the top. Okay, so all the light is hitting just the top of the leaf. So we'll just come back and do a little boop. Sound effect helps. Boop, here we go. We're gonna just touch the tops of the leaves with just a little, just a little touch of that lighter green. Yeah, that's the one I was worried about. Oh well, it's fine. There's no messing up. I didn't mess up. Did you mess up? No. We didn't mess up. We are just enjoying the process. I'll just get to flip this one more. There we go. I like it. Okay, now we need a low light. We need a darker green. So we've got our main green that we kind of had. And if you need to mix again, remember it's that blue and that yellow that we did. And we mix, mix, mix. And this time, if you've got a little, we're gonna do just like one, like one touch of black. You see, it's like just the tip just the tiniest little bit of black into the green to make it like this darker, and it almost looks kind of a yucky green. It's okay, it's our shadow color. You don't need very much of it either. So all I'm gonna do is just come up on the bottom part and just do a little, a little line of the dark, this dark green as the shadow, as the shadow. Okay, all right, we have one more thing, one more thing. Hopefully you still have that tiny little bit of black left. We're gonna just do one little shadow on our, on our ribbon with black, little line of black. And mine's getting a little dry, so you can actually add just a touch, just a little touch of water sometimes to acrylic paint to make it flow better. Um, 
So I am going to come right down here and just on the bottom part of the black of the red, add a line of black to the main part and then the bottom part to each of the tails. Okay, and we are done. Look at you. Look, I am going to applaud you right now just because you stuck with me the whole time on doing this painting. Um, there was some new stuff that you probably have never done. We did some mixing. We had to use different materials like Q-tips and, um, and plastic. But if you stuck around, I'm so proud of you. Look at your version of this painting. I think that you're going to really love it. And thank you so much for joining me on Dream With Me Art and doing art at home. So make sure that if you really like this, go ahead and like it, share it with other people and tell them how they can do art on their own. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.